Welcome back to another edition of the Gadget Lab podcast. I'm Michael Calori. I'm Mike Isaac. So the big news this week was Adobe announced end of life for yeah. Flash Player that runs in mobile web browsers. That is correct. That is basically vindicating everything that Steve Jobs has kind of said about Flash and Flash problems on mobile. Well, not only Steve Jobs, uh, right. proponents of web standards everywhere who know that there are better things <laughs> to do uh, on mobile devices than suck their battery and processing power by forcing them to run Flash Player. Right. Namely, HTML5, right? Right. That's, That's the, the, the set of technologies that we're moving to, that we've been moving to for a few years, and now it looks like it's finally going to happen by um, default, I guess. Yeah. Well, it was funny. The news broke on uh, Tuesday night, I believe. So mm -hmm. it leaked out that Adobe sent an email to a lot of their developer community, who is a, which is largely composed of sort of evangelical Flash uh, proponents, right? They're, they're, Flash needs to be everywhere. It's kind of a holdover, I believe, from the days of uh, when Flash kind of saved everything from the browser mm -hmm. wars. You know, you, you kind of know more. Yeah, about Flash, that. Flash has always kind of been a stopgap. Uh, you know, everybody wants video in the browser and there's no intelligent way to do video in the browser. So here's this technology that'll get it done for now. And then it just ended up sticking around forever. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, because there are so many different screens and so many different problems, right. uh, getting it to work across multiple platforms, uh, it was just sort of ended up being buggy at all the ends. Yeah. And so enter HTML5, right, and this sort of thing that can tie everything together, right? This sort of open set of standards versus the proprietary, you know, Flash. And yeah. this is sort of the future, right? Or this is where... It's the future present, I think, more than anything. Because, uh, you know, there are HTML5 uh, versions of uh, multimedia sites out there sure, already, sure. as you know. Yeah, you should. If you if you go on uh, your your iPhone or your Android phone with Flash Player turned off, you could find all kinds of video on the web that play in the browser. Mm -hmm. But you also find a lot that just doesn't work. Uh, right. Games and ads and a lot of video just doesn't work. Uh, so it still needs a lot of work. Yeah. And um, yeah, this I mean this is a far off sort of thing. But now it's now it's like Adobe. It's up to them to shift their resources rather than selling. Flash kits to people or flash tools, they can start selling HTML, HTML5 toolkits. Basically. Right, yeah, convert, uh, tools that or let publisher put, put what they have created onto the web in a way that does not, for mobiles, that does not use Flash Player. Right. Um, and, you know, it's also, it's, I think the, the big vindication part of it is that for a very long time, Adobe kept saying, uh, don't worry, we're working on it. Uh, we're we're helping. We're doing best we can to improve performance of Flash Player on mobiles. Yeah. And that was their script for like three years. And yeah. then finally, yeah, every time we talked to them too, it was it was just like you you know if I came across problems like with the playbook when we had the playbook, I, it was totally screwing up on me. Mm -hmm. And I came across problems and they're like, it's not our problem. It's not us. It's not us. And yeah. this is sort of like them tacitly admitting defeat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Finally, you know, in, instead of say, instead of saying pouring uh, one out for our dead flash homies. Right? Exactly. I don't know. Anyway, it's, instead it's, of saying for years and years that um, uh, don't worry, it'll be awesome any day. Well, now it's just <laughs> it's it's going to be more awesome now that it's gone. Maybe. <laughs> uh, so we right. still have a long way to go on video yeah. on mobiles. Uh, yeah. And you probably already know that because you're frustrated every day with video on your mobile. I'm sure, like we are. I, yeah. But something about mobile got a little bit less frustrating this week? Ah, iOS 5, right? So when the, when the update finally rolled out to you know, iOS devices, everyone was sort of excited and, you know, ooh, a new version. And then they found that their battery life was being sucked out at a quite a bit faster rate than, uh, than they're used to, right? Smartphones obviously have battery life issues, but mm. it was just getting sapped like that. So uh, Apple had released a, a press release last week saying that they were going to address the issue. It was some bugs in the initial rollout of the uh, um, operating system. Uh, we should see it in a few weeks. And now uh, they actually released some early versions to people, I believe on uh, like Monday of this week or earlier this week, 
And then they just sent a wide release out on Thursday. So have you installed it? Or you you don't, don't have no iPhone. Yeah, man. you don't rock iOS. IPhone. I do. Yeah, I haven't I haven't installed it yet. But no. people are reporting that it does solve the problem. Yeah, I think uh, Christina Bonington had spoken with a few of the early test case people, and she was saying that there's a marked difference already in the rollout. So. Okay. That's so, good. At least you have a phone that works. Do Do you remember when um, Apple had that problem with uh, the antenna, and people were complaining that they weren't getting enough bars, <laughs> so Apple adjusted the display oh, on the Apple iPhone's Apple told you to screen. hold your hand a different. Well, way. no, I'm, I'm talking about it's, it's a separate issue. It was oh, issue, you're talking about something else. It was the issue with with they weren't seeing enough bars, and like, oh, all of a sudden, you know, it looks like I don't have any bars. So they adjusted the height of the bars to make it easier to see. Do you think that's what they did, where they just adjusted the battery display? <laughs> you now have this many more pixels of battery yeah, power. and so they just made it wider. That is ingenious, actually. If that, that's probably a lot easier than rolling out a wide fix to, to battery yeah. life issues. I don't know. Yeah, so if you're watching this at Apple, that's, that's what you should totally do. <laughs> um, well, of course, Apple's not the only uh, smartphone out there that's awesome and Game sexy. In you town. have another one. Ow. So we, <laughs> this is, do you like the sound effect? Hello, Moto. This is Motorola's latest sort of product. It's uh, so you remember the old, the old ass razor you had in high school. Well, in my case, high school, I think I don't even know. I still have one. Do you still do you remember use, the I razor that you have on your desk outside right there? Yes. This the flip phone, the razor flip phone, the slim and awesome flip phone, the best seller. Right, right. The Motorola sort of bought their way back into actually being a competitor in the cell phone space too, right? That came out and it was like the thinnest smartphone at the time and everyone went crazy for it. And so this is the successor to the original Razer called the Droid Razer, which looks absolutely nothing like the first one. It's more of a branding thing, I think, except for the fact that it is very thin. It's uh, somewhere around a quarter of an inch thick and uh, it's pretty long. It's pretty, it's like a four point, uh, I don't know, 4.5 inch screen, something like that? I think that. it's it's 4.3 inches. 4.3, anyway, okay. it's a big screen, it's a, it's pretty thin, and it's got sort of some of these uh, accoutrements that are not necessarily uh, required. Like it has a Kevlar back, right? A mm. Literally what they make bulletproof vests out of. But so, and the, but you can't like shoot, I don't think you can. <laughs> I don't think we can get shot with the phone in our No, pocket. yeah, it's like when they used to carry the Bible in their pocket. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is this is actually it's a great phone for klutzes we found out uh, because we're both klutzes. But it has like a steel chassis inside of it and the Kevlar back and the Gorilla Glass on the front. Yeah. Um, and the housing is is especially thick around the edges, so it does actually stand up to abuse. Yeah, you can uh, sit on it in your back pocket and it won't like snap in half, even though it is pretty thin. I mean, granted, most smartphones are. Pretty rugged, uh, you know, they, and they won't shatter or, or crack when you drop them. But this one, seeing as how thin it is, it's nice to see that the um, that uh, Motorola has taken the extra care to make it that much more um, idiot proof. Right, and the the fortunately, so they have the Samsung is coming out with the Galaxy uh, Nexus, right, the mm. next generation Android phone with ice cream sandwich. So it's kind of like weird timing for Motorola to come out with their flagship phone and then this next you know, 4.0 version, but this is going to be upgradable to Ice Cream Sandwich, so people don't have to worry about their phone immediately being outdated as soon as they buy it. Well, that having been said, this is a dual core phone. We've got <laughs> quad core phones now being yeah, announced. Yeah, yeah, okay. So if I go out and buy one of these, am I gonna be kicking myself in February because now there's a quad core Motorola phone? Yeah, well, I mean, the, the other thing you have to think about though is battery life. Like how fast is a quad core gonna, I mean, where people are already complaining about dual core phones sucking down battery life, right? right? So how fast is a quad, are you gonna have like 20 minutes of game playing and then you gotta go charge your, your phone? I don't know. Well, I don't know. And do you even need that much power? Do you need four cores in your phone quite yet? Yeah. Are you doing maybe in a like tablet? In a tablet, gaming? yes. In yeah. a phone, no. Okay. I mean, for what I use my phone for, you know, if it increases my camera shutter speed from point seven seconds to point six seconds, then you know, I, I'm not gonna you know run around with my hair on fire screaming about how it's the greatest thing ever. Right. Um, I probably I won't use. even notice. Right, and I and I don't think I mean that's for maybe the nitty gritty detail oriented people, but like if mm -hmm. the for the normal for the normal folk out there, they're not gonna they're not gonna care that much. Uh, so you can find Mike Isaac's full review of the Motorola Droid Razor Hot New Sexiness on 
Wired.com product reviews very, very soon. Yeah. As soon as he files. <laughs> so as soon you got to crack the whip copy. on me. Yeah, I have to write it, and then, and then you'll be able to read it. Uh, and we will see you next time with some exciting, more, more exciting gadget news. Uh, not more exciting gadgets than this, because what could possibly be more exciting than this, but a greater quantity of new and exciting gadgets to show you. How's that? Right. Until next time. <laughs>